out there, everybody. And thanks again so much for joining us here on Expanded Perspectives with me, Cam Hale, and King of the Cold is in here with me. We have Frosty the Snowman sitting beside me. I'm not alone. It's Kyle Fields. How's it going, everybody? It's really cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really cold. Yep, we're stuck in the snow ice storm. Again. Can't uh, can't go anywhere. So, uh, it, it, look, it, none of that bothers me. What bothers me is the kids can't go outside, and they start to drive me slowly insane. I can't escape to my office because <laughs> I can't right. get anywhere. Um, yeah, we're snowed in again. It's uh, cold and uh, typical February. I don't know yeah. why everybody freaks yeah. out, but. The problem is, isn't the snow that we get here. It's like we've told y'all every year. It's the ice. Yeah, right. And that's what's going on again. We got a lot of sleet, like ice pellets, pounded down for good, a good few hours before the snow laid on it. So when you drive on it, you know, and then you know how it is. And it's slick out there right now. You came over here, and it's slick now. Yeah, I know. I so, wish I had a Subaru. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's what we've been doing. We have been sitting around the fire. We have been catching up on shows and uh, printing minis. Yep. Tell them about your new obsession. You got a new toy. I got a new toy. So I pulled the trigger, folks, and I bought a 3D printer. And Kyle and I kicked it around and kicked it around because y'all know we were getting into mini painting. And so I wasn't gonna. And then I did. And then I talked about which one I was going to get. I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. If y'all haven't gathered it by now. So I've been friends with this knucklehead a long time. What there's one thing you never do. You never get an idea and then share it with him because when you do, this jackass will talk you into way more than you really, truly need. I'm the same way whenever he gets an idea is I'm like, you know what? It would be a lot better if you went one step up, right? Right. It wasn't one step. I went like two steps up because of this jack wagon. But anyway, we've printed off a lot of stuff. I've (laughs) I've actually been interested in 3D printing for a while, you know, just because it's a a neat thing. I remember years ago seeing the first time that... I think somebody, some astronauts in the space shuttle needed a tool, and they didn't have the tool with them. So they printed it? But NASA was able to email them the the specs for some wrenches or something. It was pretty basic, you know. And uh, they 3D printed the tool, and they were able to use it to fix whatever they were working on, a, a satellite or something or a telescope. Yeah. Anyways, I remember at the time thinking, you know what? That is really cool, and I wonder if one day that will just be That'll the norm. Work. So over the years— uh, I have a family relative whose husband is uh, likes to tinker with stuff, and he has one. And every year at Christmas, he'll bring me something, like a toothpaste roller. Yeah, I got one or, of those. Yeah. Uh, this year, he gave me uh, a nutcracker for cracking. Now, that's the FDM printer, right? Well, okay. Yeah, slow down. I, I, I didn't know the different types. <laughs> Here we I, go. I didn't know any of that, right? I was just like, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then he was telling me. You know, when you you see somebody twice a year, and then they're telling you about this, and I could tell he's really into it. So he's always telling me about this and what you can do with that. I don't know. I'm just like agreeing. You know, like when someone's turning around, you just kind of nod and agree. Yeah. I had no idea that there's a whole world out there, folks. So Cam was talking about 3D printing. I started looking at it, and I was like, you know what? There's a whole community out there. Yeah. There's whole industries set up to where you can find whatever you want to print and then um, you could buy the STL file yep. and print it yourself. And then you're right. Then there's different types of printers. There's FDM, resin. Now we've got it in different types of resin, different types of yeah, everything. So we've got a resin printer because our main goal is to print miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. And Luke. And for us to, to paint. Luke loves it, right? Because that's his favorite thing. Oh, yeah. I've got Luke loaded. I don't even know how many. (laughs) Luke likes to collect, you know, I always talk about the figures of the monsters, right? Well, now you, it's unending. You can go in there and print 3D monsters and then you can paint them. You can play with them. If you break them, who cares? You can put them on display. Yeah. We have a a good friend, longtime listener of the show that is a 3D artist and sent me some files. And I think I haven't got a chance to print it yet, but I'm going to print it real soon, like today or tomorrow. But the cool thing is I believe he's going to put them up for sale. So awesome. if I can get it printed up, yeah, I will let you all know. It is – I'll just throw it out there. Imagine a steampunk version of a, a set of armor, like a large armored uh, knight, but like a steampunk knight. Ooh, it's awesome. And it's, and the 3D printing isn't just for geeky guys that want to play Dungeons and Dragons. But like, it is. There's all kinds of practical uses. Like I saw a woman where she makes amazing looking 
uh, Christmas ornaments. Oh, that's cool. And she said, you can customize them. There's all different types of, you know, logos and fonts and stuff. And you can, you know, if you had those, you could have the kids decorate them, yep, give them yep, to grandma yep. and grandpa with the year on it. You know, there we go. There's We're doing that next. Uh, I saw some candle holders. Like I saw a whole bunch of cool stuff. So you know, get ready. I didn't know it was there. Like we said, we've got some videos that are about to start dropping. Uh, keep your eyes open too. Uh, the video that I worked on is about to about to drop. I believe it drops. Tell people where to find it. Rock Slide, R O K. If you go to Rock Slide on YouTube, you'll be able to watch it. You can also follow them on Instagram and all that. But Rock Slide's a backcountry hunting uh, website, and they have forums and all that. But R O K, Rock Slide. So yeah, you can check it out. But my video that I worked on will be Sunday. I guess it will. That's what I told you, the sixth. So I believe it's like lunchtime at the sixth, so maybe two o'clock on the sixth, something like that. I'm not sure. That tells you how much I really paid attention, right? I made it and got, and then I'm like, ooh. But yeah, if you want to check that stuff out, I've seen it. it yeah, I, I, I happen to know the director and the filmer, so I, uh, I I've already seen it, and it's pretty awesome. If you're into hunting and that kind of stuff, yeah, it was it was a really really great time. They've already asked me to do it again this next season. So we'll see what happens, man. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it'll be fun. All right. Well, without further delay, let's get yeah. into some listener stories. Check this out. It says, what's up, fellas? What's up? My name is Stephen Peebles from the dumpster fire that is Washington State. LOL. I've been listening for years and I love you all. I grew up here in central Washington, living in a little rodeo cattle hay town most of my life, but lived on the west side of the state for my first 10 years in the Same, 90s. same, right? He says, I'm <laughs> a moving, little rodeo town, same. <laughs> I'm moving down to Texas this year to get close to family, warm up a little, where I can hunt, fish, ride my motorcycles year-round, and get out of excavators and ditches for the municipality I work for. And it's some real estate appraisal in East Texas. I can't wait. Now's the time to come, Stephen. Yeah. Real estate's on fire. Anyways... In the mid-90s, when I was around five or six, I lived in the outskirts of Camas, Washington, which is near Vancouver. Our house was out of town, a ways back in the woods. Me and my middle brother, who's 13 months younger than me, were playing in one of our many forts we had behind the house back in the woods. We were just hanging out, talking crap to each other, and swinging sticks around like swords. And other brush and trees and blackberry bushes were all very ripe at this time. Now, we'd stop every few minutes and eat a handful of blackberries and then go back to being hooligans, thinking we were sword-bearing badasses that nothing could get past our swords, which were essentially twigs. So we weren't fearing anything really at that point. It was during one of these pauses to eat berries that something started this god-awful cackling scream at us. My little kid mind, fresh with wearing the VC art with the 1,000th rewind of the Lion King, immediately thought hyenas, or hyenas, were after us. But the hyenas on steroids, that's what it sounded like, would be make a Brahma bull look like a Pomeranian. Wes played the Umatilla sounds from the YouTube on Sasquatch Chronicles, and I got the biggest chill bumps of my life from head to toe because the sound was very similar to the cackling sound that we heard, but it was just a lot more constant. It was loud and and frantic, much more than the Umatilla sounds, and a lot more drawn out. Like each time it did it was about 10 to 15 seconds long with maybe a two to three second pause in between. It was so loud, I thought it was right on top of us. But then, you couldn't believe it at first, it started getting even louder which I didn't think was possible. And the cackle got quicker, like it was running up on us. So as invincible as we thought we were, we took off running as fast as we could. That primal fear set in. I can't think of a time that I've ever been as scared as I was then, or have been since. My younger brother was starting to fall behind, which made the panic set in even deeper for me. And I remember grabbing him by the shirt and trying to tug him out of there as fast as I could, up a big hill back behind our house. As the woods and our forts were in, was down in a deep, dark draw. It kept getting louder, to a point that I couldn't hear the sound of us running and panting anymore. And I thought to myself, this is it. We're goners. But I kept digging as hard as my little legs would let me, and we never turned around and looked because we were 
too afraid to see what it could have been, and were too focused on running through the thick woods and little trails we had through the blackberry bushes and trees as fast as we could. As we broke the hill into the clearing of the backyard, it stopped immediately, and it was dead silent. No birds, no squirrels, our dogs, or even the neighbor's dogs. Everything was dead quiet. We never stopped running or looked. We just ran the 50, 60 yards we had left to the back door of the house and stormed in. And that's when we looked from the safety of the back sliding door, but we didn't see anything. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I know what people are talking about when they say you can just feel the noise. Whatever it was, it would have had to have the lungs the size of a hefty bag to make those noises as loud and as long as this thing did. We assessed ourselves once the panic went away and a bit and found ourselves in trouble by our grandmother because we covered thick we were covered thick in scratches from all those blackberry bushes and had a nice dark ring in the front of my brother's pants where he had proceeded to wet himself in the midst of the chaos. I'm 32 now and I still think about it nearly daily. I asked my brother if he remembers, which he does, but that's about the extent, and he wants to end the conversation. He doesn't want to remember it or even talk about it. Thank you guys for everything you do. I really appreciate you and all the hope, and I hope to be able to buy you a beer or ten one day. As some great men once said, peace, y'all. Stephen. Stephen, you want to buy something nice, we'll come over and eat barbecue. Now you're talking. That's what you want to now get. Now you're talking. <clears throat> East Texas barbecue. Look, that is not okay. No, that is a very common thing happening. You the, know exactly where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. with the berries. With the berries, we've talked about it with missing four one one. Then you start hearing these sounds. Like I don't know what it is about the Fay or Big Feets that likes to hunt around berry patches, but something be popping off. Do around you like? There. Do you like berries? Uh, in a fried pot. No, yeah, I do. I really do. I love, when I was younger, it was one of my favorite things to do was to find like wild berries, mm-hmm. right? Like how great is it? Because you feel like an explorer. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's silly, you're but you're like, foraging off the ooh. land. We used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the, well, you remember where we, we, we used to go run around with our buddy Joe and all that. They had like, uh, peach trees there at their house. And remember, we'd while you're camping out there at night, we were like 12, you would sneak in and get one. And it was like you were living off the land, right? It's just his parents' peach trees, but it really felt like you were doing something. To me, that's the way berries always felt without ever knowing that this kind of danger might have lurked around there with There was a, a watermelon patch on the neighbor's property that I uh, may have snuck over one time and got shot with rock salt. <laughs> shot at? Yeah, for real, right? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? I, I love raspberries. I love raspberries. Like, that's one of my faves. Yeah. And uh, but I like blueberries too. But yeah, I, I've never had a strange experience. Of course, I've never been picking them uh, raspberries or blueberries in the wild. But we don't get a lot of that around <clears throat> here, not like here. in other places. It's harder to find. Yeah, but and every animal likes them. But you, you would be surprised at the number of strange sightings or experiences people have in and around berry patches. For oh, whatever yeah. reason. Well, I've got something here too, as far as when we're talking about the noise that I want to share kind of piggybacking off of what he had shared. It says this, SP says, I've just finished packing up my deer blind in a remote area of Fayette County, West Virginia, when the coyotes started howling. Then, of course, I heard someone else's dog start howling from across the Gailey River. Suddenly, from behind the mountain where I was, I heard a horribly loud mixed howling sound, like the sound of Tarzan. It silenced every living creature for at least 10 minutes. As darkness was approaching, I began to reload my pistol and my rifle and ran down to my truck about a half a mile from the trail just so I could get home and get on the computer and look up that sound to confirm what I thought it was. Uh, what was so, it? Big Feets. <laughs> heard some howling of, of Sasquatch or something. What I, I liked about that, quick and easy, but what I enjoyed about that is this, the silence. When that sound goes off, Everything knows what it is. That's what's so weird. When we talk about the silence in the woods, for those of you that experienced it, know exactly what we mean. For those of you that haven't, it truly is eerie when you go out there. The only thing that I can relate it to is, and it's funny because it happened yesterday and today here, is we live close to a busy road. 
So you can hear a lot of road noise and town noise. We live on the edge of town, but the two roads by Kyle and I's house are relatively busy because of town expansion. It's growing, so we've got more traffic. Mm -hmm. So there's really not a time that you don't hear vehicles moving or something going on, even at night. And we have a lot of jackasses around here that like to drive the big jacked up trucks with all the noise. And it's got the big pipes and oh, where they're driving around and the road noise of the big trucks and all that stuff. Look, it's not cool at all, right? They they spent millions of dollars and hours building these vehicles to be quiet. And yeah. y'all come along and do this stuff to them. What I'm getting at is the silence. The last few days with the roads so bad, there's been nobody on them. The silence. And it's strange because you get used to that background noise, that gray noise, right? You get used to it. It's the same thing in the woods. When you spend a lot of time in the woods, there are certain noises you become accustomed to. And when those noises go silent, everything on you is screaming that there is a problem. And what's funny is you don't instantly know it. You stumble into it. Like we've talked about, you may be bebopping along and not realize that it's been that quiet for the last five minutes because, well, at least for me, because I'm a dummy. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh, my Lord. So when they talk about that silence, yeah, it means something's going on. Mother Nature knows there's something out there. It's not happening for an interdimensional creature, right? Mother Nature's not bowing it down for interdimensional. Maybe you're seeing a ghost. Mother Nature's bowing down from something or at least putting itself on hold for something making that racket. I agree. And it's uh, it's it's eerie and it's shocking that how many people have bizarre sightings in and around the being dead quiet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it. Uh, the people that go missing, it always makes you wonder. Like we always you and I laughed off air not long ago about the fog. Fog is like the the veil, right? Like that's like the door opens and the fog machine comes on. You can cross between boundaries or it's almost that same thing. When it gets quiet, you're like, wait a second. Something's not right. Right? That's why they use it in artificially in movies all the time. Yeah. There's something creepy about it. About it, yeah. For yeah, real. but before we get into more creepy stories, let's take a break. Yeah. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. And we're back Woo. with Expanded Perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got some more stories we just want to share with you all and talk about. Uh, one subject that I find interesting, uh, as well as terrifying, is when it comes to stories of alien abduction. Uh, I remember reading the book Communion and then later seeing the movie as a young person. And it was most terrifying to me is the fact that you have no safety. Even in your home, they can come get you. And there's literally... Nothing you could do. I would daydream like in bed. <clears throat> like if aliens were getting me, I would commit a crime. So they'd throw me in prison. That way, if I was in prison, they wouldn't do they wouldn't be able to mess with me anymore. They couldn't get you. Come pick they couldn't you get up. Me. Or I said I would engineer a house where I lived in like I'd have a custom bank vault <laughs> put in my house and I would live in the vault at night so they couldn't come get me. But then I would sit there and be like, no, man, they could get you. They could zap you right through a vault. Like, They'll come get you if they want you. You just, you drive yourself crazy. Remember I said I was going to actually <laughs> wire. Go ahead. I was going to wear a vest that was C4 <laughs> and yeah. it was going to be wired to my heart rate. And when they co they collected me <laughs> and my heart rate got up from fear, it would explode. <laughs> Take but then what, what if I had a day, like a bad dream? Yeah, you'd be dead. <laughs> and then well, I just blow up my house. Well, you wouldn't know. You <laughs> wouldn't would know. No, no, that's true. But not just is the subject of an abduction interesting. The ones I think that are the most interesting are the ones where they botch it, where they mess up. And like that's not that often. I know, but there are cases where people, are these extraterrestrials or whatever they are, are trying to abduct them, and then they mess up. You think that's like the B team? That's like the the, the leader of the A team got sick, so they got to send in like the guys they call in extra, I think, right? Yeah, I think about some intergalactic overlord who that's these, third these the, shift that's coming are, in these to are do the that. New guys, and yeah. they messed it up, and then they got to go back to the mothership, and they're like, "What are you doing? How'd Kicking you? rocks, looking down, not making eye contact." Yeah. So speaking of that, here's a here's a case. Check this out. On September fourth. 1964, 28-year-old Donald Shrum and his friends went out bow hunting in Cisco Grove in Placer County, California. Word. And at some point, he would become separated from his group. Since nightfall was approaching, he decided to sleep in a tree 
for the night and catch up with his companions the following day. But his sleep would not be easy for him on this night. As he drifted in and out of half-sleep days and consciousness and crazy daydreams, his attention was captured by a bright light zigzagging through the dim darkness of the trees, which he at first took to be a helicopter, but would soon prove to be anything but when the mysterious light approached him to begin silently hovering nearby. Now, Shrum tried to stay out of sight, but it was obvious that this light had noticed him. And not only that, a short time later, three strange-looking beings could be seen on the ground approaching the tree. He would describe two of them as humanoid in general shape, but the other as looking like some sort of outlandish robot. He stated that he was startled when they began shaking the tree with great force, seemingly in an effort to dislodge him and make him fall out. As this was going on, the robot apparently exuded a white mist from its mouth that caused him to fall asleep. When he awoke not much longer after that, the strange creatures were still seemingly trying to get him out of the tree. So he decided to fight back by dropping, get this, lit matches on them, which caused them to back off a bit, but it didn't stop them. Then he resorted to shooting at them with his bow, noticing that his arrows caused sparks when they bounced off the robot. As the night wore on, more of the robot-like creatures appeared, and the humanoids began trying to crawl up the tree towards him. Now, Shrum claims that he shot all of his arrows until his quiver was empty, and after which he began hurling anything he could find at the strange entities. At one point, when ga- he was gassed again by the similar white smoke, But he said every time this would happen, he would snap out of it quickly. And again, he would find these creatures still unsuccessfully trying to reach him. He claims that this happened all the way till sunrise, after which they finally gave up and left him alone. Somewhat corroborating his story is that his hunting companions would also later report having seen strange lights in the sky the same night. They didn't get him. They couldn't. They tried. I love the idea of throwing lit matches at them. <laughs> right? So I never, like in the beginning, I, I never contemplated. But one way to avoid abduction by aliens, it seems, is to sleep in a tree. They have trouble with trees. Fight back. You think of all their skills, all their technology. Can't get up a tree. They don't you know can't how to use climb the it. word they. That's a broad brush. Maybe not all of them have problem <laughs> with trees. Just the B team, right? Okay, you're right. But yeah, right? It's like they, they, were, they couldn't figure out how to get up the tree. When I think of these people, I think of the movie The Suicide Squad. I, I think of the group where they're just kind of bumbling through. They're trying to get it done, but they're bumbling through. Yeah. To get stuff like, we're going to get this guy abducted. No, he's shooting arrows at us. <laughs> well, and, you know, maybe it's a different type of extraterrestrial. Maybe not yeah. all of them are coming from the same place. This is true. Yeah. There's different species, different intergalactic races. Yeah. Some of them are real bright. Some of them aren't. But you'd think if you could figure out how to travel interstellar distances like they're capable that, yes that grabbing a hunter out of a tree would be pretty easy but maybe not it makes me wonder though if i mean like a dolphin watches you swim and is like why can't this thing swim better and you're like i'm not a dolphin right like ovi why don't you just score yeah <laughs> so maybe um well and it also goes in to make me think maybe there are different like we've talked about different aliens are capable of different things. The reason I bring that up is I started watching a series on sci-fi called Resident Alien. Okay, I've seen the I've seen the commercial trailer where it looks like a, a guy who's like a dentist or something, well, but he's really an alien. So I, I, I've never what's seen his name. The show. Andy is it Turek? He was the guy from Firefly. He was the captain of the ship on, or not the captain. He was the pilot of Firefly, and then he's in the movie Serenity, and he's been in Nathan Fillion. Was the captain of uh, in Firefly and in the movie Serenity and all that great series, great movie. Like I like that, but Andy's great, yeah. But he, in the show, he talks about uh, he he's talking about other aliens and how only the alien Greys implant you with chips. Like there's an episode's got Giorgio Sukulos in it. Like there's a it, it's is, so is he a Gray? No, he's not a Gray. He is related to octopus. But he looks like a human or he's an well, alien he's, that can make himself. He makes himself look shapeshift human. or something. But it's only an energy 
there's certain people can see through it and see that he's an alien. I got you. So it's his alien, whatever the whole deal. But the way he describes it is each one is just like we are here, right? It's so vast that we all have different ways of doing things and different. So, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe one alien species wouldn't have botched it, but these knuckleheads botched it, right? Makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense that there's multiple types. If you sent me to go abduct somebody, I'm not going to be real good at it. They're going to be able to shoot arrows at me and I'm going to run off, right? Like, I'm not playing that game. You're in a tree. I'm like, I'm out. Right. I'll go find somebody that's not running away. Yeah. I've got to read this to you right here. Why I sent this, okay? Just the letter. I want you to listen to this stuff because I think you're going to enjoy it. It says, I'll start this story by saying it's a pretty short one and that I have no idea why this happened. So without all that, this is what went down. It was pretty late at night and I wanted to get to sleep. And just right about when I had finally got comfortable and laid my head on the pillow and eyes closed, I immediately had a vision of a gnome, a really short one. And he stood behind this transparent curtain and it faced in front of me since the big window is right at the foot of my bed. I could clearly see his his features since the curtain was transparent or sheer. He had a huge smile and he had closed, it said here, but of course his eyes are open, he says, but they're smiling. So his cheeks make him look squinted, right? Huge smile. Uh Uh-huh. Says right after I had that vision, and I know it wasn't my imagination because I don't usually imagine stuff like this at all. I sat up in bed feeling terrified at what I thought I had seen. But I didn't feel comfortable sleeping near the window because, of course, I had dreamed about the gnome being there. So, get a load of this. Dr- looks over, there it is. This gnome standing behind the sheer curtain then just vanishes. Why goes on to say that he runs out, goes and tells yeah, her sister yeah. of this whole thing that goes on. So has this vision. So again, is it a vision or is it your body alerting you to it? But actually had seen a gnome, a little gnome, like we're talking about with the little hat, the whole deal, standing behind a sheer curtain in between. So I always wonder, first of all, how do they get in? And if you're going to get in, why hide behind a curtain? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, the only reason is because it's messing with you. I love the stories. The gnome gnomes. stories are my favorite stories because it's always little trickster fay. Yeah. Because if they wanted to kill you, they'd kill you. Yeah, they just do it they while They could come sleeping. in and out. Uh, cat's eye, right? Yeah. The things would come in there. It could easily kill you if it wanted to. It doesn't. It enjoys messing with you. That, that's, that's why they it. call them tricksters. Exactly. You know, the machine elves and all these other things that are just oh, yeah. behind the curtain. Uh, the curtain, the veil of reality, not, the veil. not, not a literal literal curtain. Yes. But uh, yeah, they're just on the other side. I love those stories. Yeah. Uh, check this one out. I always believed in and have been interested in the paranormal, and I absolutely love your show. I heard one time that one of your brothers is a firefighter. I live in southwestern Pennsylvania, and I've been a firefighter for over five years. We have a ghost at our fire department. Awesome. It's an old member who died many years ago, and many of our members, myself included, have had experiences with, well, we call him Uncle Al. There have been many times where someone has experienced sounds, noises, and just odd feelings while working late at night in the fire department. We've had a game room added onto the art department after our member had already died. So he cannot pass into this new room, but you can feel his presence when you go to the doorway. Hmm. One of the most memorable experiences I have had with Uncle Al was one day when I was in the engine bay office with two other members, a guy named Ken and myself. This has also occurred before when I was alone. We could hear chairs being knocked off of the tables in our social hall. We went upstairs to investigate and all of the chairs looked like they were pushed off of the table. Ken and I went back downstairs and left everything as is, and not long later, maybe around 10 minutes, we heard the chairs falling and moving again. Hmm. We went back upstairs, and all the chairs were set back up onto the tables. I'm not making any of this up. Another experience with Uncle Al occurred when I was standing in the bathroom, which is in the social hall the part where Al can roam around. It was about midnight, and I looked out of the window at least five minutes previous and noticed no members' cars except mine were in the lot. 
Soon, I heard someone calling my name. The sounds were coming from the doorway to the stairwell. I can also hear people walking around in the bays again and people stepping on the grates on the floor. I went downstairs to investigate, looking out the window again and still no cars in the car lot. I go to the door to the engine bays and see that the lights were off. There is always the sense of being watched by Uncle Al. Be it one person or ten people, in the firehouse you can always feel a presence of someone or something watching you. Thanks for all you do, Jeff. So it's a cool story because the thing doesn't doesn't harm anybody or anything. But what I like is like the new addition. The ghost can't like travel into the new part. It can only go where it used to go, where as a, when it was a living person. So I have, which uh, is a crazy idea, right? Go ahead. It is insane, but it it makes sense, right? It was. It only knows. It may not even like Uncle Al may not even see the new part. Yeah, right. Who, because he had no memory of it when he passed. Yeah, I don't know how it works, but you're right. So I have several friends that are in law enforcement, and I've had one tell me that uh, something not quite this distinct has happened, but it happened in a vehicle of all places, said that they had an officer that was an older fella, right, that had Uh been there and and had worked for the the municipality that they worked for for quite some time and ended up passing away. He was still working for the, the, not the city here, but the city he worked for at the time, but passed away from, uh, I think, a heart attack, died in his sleep while he was still employed and all that. So he died still a police officer, right? He'd never retired. That was the whole thing. And I remember the buddy of mine telling me that there would be some strange things always happened in his patrol car. The, and it never started until the time he passed, like after he passed, like you may have it on the radio and then it may just do something crazy and just start running scans and that they would take it in and do a bunch of stuff to it and run all the troubleshooting. There'd be no problems. And then all of a sudden it would do it again or it might go through batteries faster. Or there was always something in not just say electrical, but like little things like you would move stuff around the way you wanted it. And it might be different when you got back in, like little things might change. He goes, and it wouldn't happen all the time, but just enough. He said it got to be so much of a of a thing that enough guys knew about it that would that might use that car or whatnot. Yeah, that it was it was kind of like an inside joke between three or four of them and that they would talk to him when they jumped in. That's insane. because they're like, oh, I'm gonna, I've got a ride along tonight, you know, and you right. get on there at night and you're like, I guess he's st- he doesn't know he's dead. He's still doing his shift. Right. He's just in there doing his like, thing. What could that be, though? I why, don't. Why would the residual energy be left behind? And why does it not happen for everybody? <sighs> like some people yeah. uh, are a ghost and some aren't. And I'm, it's not always somebody who died tragically. No. Yeah, like this. This guy just passed away in his sleep. There's nothing tragic about it. He was married. His kids were grown. This dude passes away and then bang, man. Do you get the, do you get the, the choice? Like when you die and you I hope go so. up to the pearly gates, you know, to St. Peter or whatever. Ask well, you're him. not good. I don't know why you're talking like you're going to go talk to St. Peter. I didn't say me. No, I'm, I'm talking gonna, about better the, not say you. the audience, the listening no, yeah, audience. Yeah. Do they yeah. give you a choice? Would it's going like, to be hot tap dancing where you're going, player. They're like, hey, we've been waiting on it. Do you want to go in here? Or would you? Or would you like to haunt some people for a while? What would you choose if 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 you passed and they were like, "Hey, man, look, you can go have some fun. You don't got to stay long." But also, too, five minutes, maybe fifty years here might be five minutes to you. I would choose to haunt. I think it would be fun. God. Not only could I look in on my loved ones to see how they were doing, <sighs> asshole in the afterlife, but then I could cause mischief if I wanted to. That's the new your new van, fun. afterlife asshole. That's it. That's you. You know. I mean, I think it would be you could. You know, play. You could pull all kinds of pranks. I'd haunt it too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'd be right there with you. Yeah. It would be fun, right? If you knew you couldn't be seen. I'm not gonna be a, like an evil person, but I just want to mess around, move stuff around a little bit. Have you ever? Have you ever? Do you ever watch any of these ghost hunting shows? That Absolutely I'm none. Yeah, I've. I try not to, but I have. I've seen a few, of course, and I know there's a lot of listeners of ours that are actual ghost hunters. So maybe you could fill me in. But I see this device that they use. All the time, and I don't remember the name of the thing. You gonna get one? I think no, you need no, to get no, the no, better no, one. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you get one, you need to get one a little bit bigger. Yeah. Well, they definitely need to make a better one because I've seen this on multiple shows. Here and it's we like go. a thing, and they always claim that they're picking up some kind of spirit's voice, you know, on the thing. Yeah. But it sounds like it's just scanning radio stations, and then every once in a while you'll hear like a word or phrase. But to I me, gotcha. to me, that's not ghost. It's like literally just streaming all the the radio frequencies. That are floating around, and every once in a while you'll catch for a split second a DJ or someone talking, and they'll be like, "Look, it just said the car," 
But, and I don't oh. think it's I don't think it's paranormal. I see what you're saying. But I don't they know. always claim it's paranormal. I'm like, well, then why is it always never like clearly spoken? That's a good point. And then another problem with the TV shows, you know how easy it would be to fake the show. That that's the whole thing. Is there? Look, I enjoy what they're doing. It's the same as any of that stuff. But I, did, but I, I just it doesn't don't watch work. It. it doesn't work good on TV, right? It's it doesn't not, work for me. That's what it is. I think that's what it is. It, it may work for. It just doesn't work for me. So I just don't watch it. I constantly think like they're not being genuine. Like how easy it would be for I have, I don't know, a person that you haven't seen on the TV you in be, another room go, hey, Cam. He'd be like, that was, did you hear it? Yeah. I mean, that's, you don't even need high production. You want to get some good production value, take me and you into a haunted house, dude. No, no, I will no. straight panic. You want to get that on video? No, I'm I will not going. straight panic. I've been invited lots of times. I always turn it down. Yeah. I just can't. I can't. It freaks me out. I don't man. need that in my life. I no. got enough problems. I'm printing minis, baby. I've got something here. You talk about a problem. L- listen to this this noise right here. This comes from AY. Now, this is a place. This is Italy. This place is, <laughs> dude, this is great. It says, my grandparents used to rent a house in a little mountain village for three months in the summer. And I used to go there every summer. I started back when I was five and went there until I was 14. I would go there with my sister, who's seven years older than me, and my cousin, who's three years younger than me. Now, I really enjoyed my time there, so when I grew older, this passion for the mountains stuck with me. So I'm now 26, and every summer I go hiking with my boyfriend. The trails we used to hike are sometimes very stiff, and it's just the two of us surrounded by the mountain and the silence that covers everything. Sometimes we even camp halfway if the climb is too long. Well, one day we were climbing a difficult trail near a lake in Italy and I had finished first. So I was waiting for my boyfriend at the end of the path. Of course, at the top of that mountain. It was beautiful there. Butterflies flew on the flowers around me. The birds were chirping happily. I could see the whole lake surrounded by the forest. I like to sit in the silence of the mountain and just watch the stunning view of the lake and watch the animals around me living their lives. It is so relaxing and one of my favorite things. So I was sitting there on a rock, and I don't know how, but I felt that something was in the woods behind me. Now behind me there was a precipice, not very deep though, and the forest would cover the end of it and all around. So I stood up and tried to see if there was something down there. And that's when I saw it. And I still get the shivers when I think about it. Deep down in there, there was a chamois, a beautiful one with long horns. And I got excited because I rarely see one. I was looking at him from behind. His fur was light brown and he had a black line that went from the neck to the tail. But something was very wrong with it. That's when I froze. His front legs looked like they didn't end with a normal cloven hoof but he had three fingers at the end of his front legs, similar to a bird claw, but not that sharp. The back legs seemed normal. I could see it because he was walking very slowly and calmly through the vegetation. Then I noticed with great horror that his face seemed flat, no muzzle. I couldn't look at him directly in the face, but I could see his forehead and nose. What should have been there just wasn't. Now, thinking about it now, I really wished I had seen his face just to see how the eyes and mouth were organized. See, he disappeared into the pine shadows, and I was still there, shocked when my boyfriend finally arrived. I told him what I'd seen, and he didn't believe me. He just laughed. Now, I know it's not scary, and it can even be funny if you think about it. A chamois with eagle's legs and a flat face. I thought about it all the time we were descending. It was so weird. And at the end, I told myself that, well, I must have dreamed it, even if I would love to know that I wasn't the only one to see this thing. I like to think it was a deity that took that form of a chamois. There wasn't any village at the mountain's feet, so I couldn't ask if someone saw it also, or if someone knew anything about this weird animal living in that mountain forest. Wow. I've never even... Now, we've seen goats with, like, blunt faces, Uh you know. But they don't survive. Right. Right. So one, if it's got some sort of facial deformity that affects the way it drinks and or eats, it's not going to survive in Mother Nature. Nature is 
you know, an unrelenting force. It does not care about you. And also, if it's got deformed front legs, more than likely, it's not going to survive in Mother Nature. It would be easier than if it had deformed front legs and deformed face. So it does sound like something you saw extremely unsettling. Yeah. Is it a not chamois? Well, I was going to say for the uninformed, let them know what a chamois is. We're not talking about a cloth you wipe your car down. No, with. yeah, we're talking about a horned mammal. It's like a little goat, uh-huh. basically. And they're awesome. They're neat little creatures when you take a look at them. I know guys uh, pay a ton of money to go hunting for them, like in New Zealand. New Zealand. And stuff. Well, my buddy JT went over there. My buddy went, uh, let's see, JT hunted, what, two years ago, three years ago over there? Went and ran around the mountains up there. Him with uh, him and Lake Fort guy. If you get on Face uh, on YouTube and pull up Lake Fort guy, you can see the videos of him and my buddy JT when they went over there. But yeah, they went like three years ago chamois hunting on the side of the mountain in New Zealand. And it's the first time I'm like, I have to get to New Well, it's not the first, but it was the time that secured that I have to go to New Zealand. I want to go to New Zealand. I could care less about chamois hunting, but I want to no, go to New Zealand. I don't want to kill a chamois. If I, I want think- a chamois, I'll go to AutoZone, buy one. I don't need to go kill a chamois. I ain't that mad at them. First of all, they're little. Yeah. I they bet look- they taste great. But anything that's that hard to get is going to taste amazing. <laughs> I still, what would you mistake in that for? Man, I don't know. They don't give, this person doesn't give the distance, right? They don't give the distance. But you're talking about a precipice looking down in this valley. Look, no glass. It, it wasn't so far that you couldn't see the detail of its legs or its face. But this, but she described it having like eagle-like legs, didn't it? Well, just a joke because its front legs looked like it had three fingers. Oh, and no claws. I so gotcha. what? Yeah. Maybe that was some alien transformation. It was trying to turn into a chamois. I, I don't know. I just thought it was neat that you see. I've never heard of a chamois, not deer, right? Not <laughs> chamois. I've never heard of that. I just thought it was cool. Right. Uh, speaking of animals, yeah. uh, check this out. In 1976, in July, a friend and I, who is now a dentist. Before you go any further, in August of 76, a monster was born. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's sitting next to me. This pile of dung, <laughs> this dung heap was born. <laughs> so this is a month before you were born. Yes, July 1976. This person claims that a friend and I, who is now a dentist and a no-nonsense kind of guy, were cruising between Lincoln and Auburn, California, on a quiet county road. We drove over the top of a hilly road, and we were descending when I noticed a bright bluish-white light shining down on the road about 200 yards in front of us. It was coming from a point over a large group of scrub oak trees. The trees came to a point over the road, creating a canopy effect. And what was strange is there was no street lights, and none of the light shining down on the road was being blocked out by the trees. As we approached this light, my car began to sputter. Uh Uh-oh. And lost power, and the headlights went out. As we were approaching the light, I was flashing my bright lights on and off. This was before the car shut down. As soon as the car rolled to a stop, I opened the door to step out, and the light disappeared. While leaves were floating down below from where the light had been, and these leaves were falling on the road in front of us. Now, during July, in the Sacramento Valley, it's still about 80 degrees, and there was no wind. It gets very hot here in the summer. The thing that really shocked me was four days later, we took two of our cats to the vet, which was about three miles out of town. When the vet drove up, he was acting confused and was stuttering, which is what he always did whenever he got excited. He had been called out, he claims, to a ranch to look at a dead cow. He explained to me and my mother that the cow had been cut up in a very strange and unusual way that he's never seen or heard of before. He said it was missing an eyeball, an udder, and its entrails. Mm. Its hindquarters had been drilled or bored out, he claimed. He also said there were no flies, no bugs, and no predator bite marks anywhere on this cow. The cow was located 50 yards from the very spot that we saw the lights over the trees. My doctor friend said his mother was upset with him for getting home so late that night, the night we saw the lights. However, we were only out there in the country for about an hour and a half. He claims that it was past 4 a.m. when we got home. What? Yep. After dropping him off that night, I was really tired, and I just went home and went to bed and didn't pay attention to the time. He claims, get this, that we lost three hours. And to this day, I have no idea what we saw or what happened. He refuses to talk about it with me or to anyone else. 
I've seen other strange lights in the past over the years, but this situation has always made me scratch my head, and I wonder what really happened that night to us and that poor cow. Nothing was ever said to the police or the news media regarding the mutilated cow or the lights that we saw. After years of hearing about alien abductions and cow mutilations, I believe we may have been part of something that cannot be explained with science or rational thought. Science! My interest in UFOs has been very strong for years, and I'm sure there are other things going on around us we cannot explain. Or can we make sense of them because we are not allowed to by those conducting such intrusive examinations of humans and animals? Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it because I can remember it like it happened yesterday. We weren't drinking, we weren't smoking or doing any drugs of any kind. My doctor friend always has been and still is against such activities, I guess due to his medical training or perhaps his personal beliefs. Or he's a square. (laughs) On the other hand, I had known. I know something happened beyond the norm and will take it to my grave as a real and unexplained experience. Thanks, MR. You get some new friends. (laughs) Right, but how scary is that? And this is not the first time that I've heard about somebody thinks that they could have been abducted or something had happened to mm-hmm. them, and they just don't really want to know. I'm going to let you know, too. Don't look into it. I, I would have to agree. I wouldn't want to know. There's dude. No, man. If you think you're having a trouble sleeping because of blue light, you're really going to have trouble sleeping <laughs> knowing that you were taken and tagged and Felix bagged. Felix Gray ain't going to protect you from that. You know, getting probed <laughs> and everything else that goes along with it. And worth they're continuing. Those glasses ain't going to save you from that. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? But it's the classic thing, the cattle the cattle mutilation, yep. the missing time, the strange bright lights. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, bright light. it's the same thing over and over. Yeah. And, you know, if I was to guess, my friend, my friend, I think something probably happened to you. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, yeah, I don't want to know. I, I really don't think I would ever look into it. No, I would just because of fear. Of There's stuff I ignore now that I shouldn't, and I really would definitely ignore that. I don't want any part of that stuff. Before we get gone, I want to I want to read this to you, okay? Yeah. You're going to really like this. All right. Let's see here. Frank sent this in over here to me. I'm going to read this to you. It says, one night, me and a couple of my mates went fishing. Hell yeah. Yeah. We would always go. You ready? Th- th- this, is, this is why I wanted to say it here to you. Because of that right there. These are our Australian friends, of course, as you can tell, with mates. And it says, we would always go get stoned. So it kind of makes the story a little discredited. I know. But I know what I saw and what I saw. Thanks for being honest and upfront. Yeah. And this story is 100% real. Now, look. uh, Hypothetically, you and I may have done some drugs. And I've never, I've seen some things, but I've never seen something. I've never been so far gone that I have had something crazy happen to where I thought that it was real and it turns out it wasn't. Aside from, there was one time I did some psychedelics, but the weed wasn't that. But that also doesn't mean that something paranormal can't happen to someone who's under the influence. But it, it may, what I'm getting at is it might dial you in more to those frequencies. That's, that we is don't definitely know, true. Right? We don't know. But anyway, this is what it says. Anyway, after we tried and failed at a few spots, we thought we'd go try out a local pier. Once we got there, we proceeded to head towards the pier. We stopped about halfway down it, baited the hooks, got everything ready, and waited. And that's when I looked up towards the end of the pier and there was this kid, probably around my age at the time, which is 16, just fishing and minding his own business. Then I saw then, a man and a woman, at least what they looked like at the time. They were, I think, bothering this kid, just annoying the hell out of him. I could see he was nervous while they just hung around him trying to talk. So that's when I decided to go to the end of the pier. I figured, hey, we'll have better luck out there maybe. So I packed up, told my mates I was changing spots, and started up towards the end. Well, as I'm walking towards the end, the bloke quickly passed me, pacing, mumbling under his breath, and cursing at me. I thought, all right, weirdo. I wasn't alarmed. There's a lot of crazies in my town. And as I got closer towards the end, I suddenly noticed that the woman, sitting on the ground, facing away from me, and I instantly got the creeps. I was catching these strange, creepy vibes. She was combing her hair with a really shiny gold comb. All the while, she was holding this really, really old silver antique mirror with the handle and all. This is bad, homie. Could you imagine seeing that? No. First of all, who's doing this? But okay, yeah. 
Which all of this kind of freaked me out a little bit because it was in the middle of the night. How could she see anything was beyond me? So I thought this was a little strange and was getting these weird vibes. So I thought I was just head back. But that would make it look weird. I didn't want them to think I was weird. This is so funny. This is like a, what a young person thinks, right? <laughs> yeah. So as an old guy, I'd be like, what the hell? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so goes on. He says, so I walked around a little bit, right? And uh, walked around her, continued to go and start fishing next to that kid. Now, the kid gave me a glance and a nod to which I saw his eyes. And he looked drained, almost sickly, like he was half asleep or something. And I thought, well... That's enough of this. So I reeled up and went back to my mates and I said, look, I don't like this spot. Let's try another one. And to my relief, they all agreed because they weren't getting any bites either. A few minutes later, we packed up and headed towards the car. And as we're loading everything in the car, I heard a man yelling from across the road. I look over my shoulder and there he was, the man from the pier staring right at me. That's when all the hairs on my body stood on end and I saw him morph into a hairy goat creature. What? Yes. I was scared to death. I couldn't move. I was frozen with fear. And the more scared I got, the more defined I could make out his goat body. I really can't explain it. it. It still continues to baffle me and it continued to torment and laugh at me until I blacked out. Now, I can't remember much, but we went to a few other spots. But I was pretty much on autopilot after that, I think. The more I look back, the stranger the experience was. This goat man had pointed ears, a dog's nose, goat legs, and hooves. His whole body was covered in hair and also had a little vest on. Cute little vest. A satyr. Basically how you'd imagine a satyr from Greek mythology would look. I have a bad habit of weird and strange stuff happening around me all the time, so either I'm crazy or it just happens to be that I'm the only person observant enough to notice these at the time. Now, I've done a bit of research, and what I can conclude is I think I ran into a witch and its servant that night. These half-goat, half-men with pointed ears and witches dance around fires naked, it says, and I think that's her familiar. Wow. So the reason I bring that up, besides the fact that it's Australian, I love the crazy Aussies, and besides the fact of how wild that is, is this thing here. So we talked about that alien, right? Resident alien, much uh-huh. I like the show. And yeah. how could it be that maybe she was an evil entity? He was an evil entity. The kid looking sickly was having its energy drained by these two that were out there in the middle of nowhere. Maybe it is producing something that causes you to see certain things. Somehow, this person, we also know a person, and we all know empaths that seem to be dialed into those levels before. That was that energy hitting him. And that's what made him black out. It was pulling that energy. The reason it couldn't move, the reason he couldn't flee or say or do anything was the same reason that kid was sitting on the end of that pier fishing. Yeah. Is because it had sucked him dry of that kind of drive and that kind of energy, except he realized he could see him. And so when that satyr realized, oh, that person can see me, now I'm going to laugh. I'm going to poke more fun because nobody's going to believe you. I can be as crazy as I want. Nobody's going to believe what you see. That's crazy. I like, but even the little, just the vest. I mean, the like the little, little satyr vest. The little parts yeah. to the story that make it so interesting. It does, right? And that's awesome. Let's take a break. And when we get back from the break, I've got another goat man story for you. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. And we're back with Expanded Woo! Perspectives. Very interesting stories. Uh, you were talking about a satyr or a goat man. I got a quick one. Before you go, aren't you, weren't you going to tell everybody that you were actually going to play a satyr in one of our D&D games at one point? I was because, uh, you know, th- there's various reasons that they're pretty good. But and I, what are you playing now? I am a minotaur. <laughs> yes. But anyways, let's look up some good minotaur stories. We're going to find some good, good minotaur idea. sightings. And some not chamois stories. And some not chamois stories. Minotaurs yeah. and not chamois. There you go. Uh, check this out. It says, yeah. my grandparents, in particular my grandmother, 
told us kids about how one night when they were driving home on a country road in southern Minnesota in the early 1930s, they came across a creature walking across the road with, get this, goat legs, a goat head, but a human torso and arms. It jumped off of the road and into a cornfield. My grandfather went back to town, got some additional farmers, and they searched for the creature, but of course, they found nothing. A couple of points. First, I've never heard a story like that before from anyone else. And second, my grandmother never told stories. And to this day, this is the only story like this, or anything scary, that she has ever talked about. Third, I'm a science geek. And as a 10-year-old, I asked her all the time about that story, and she told it the same way every single time. Yep, Sorry, bruds, zero proof, and you can assume anything you want, but I believe my grandmother. Why would she lie? She's never told a story of anything like this, and then this is the one story she tells. That's what his point is. Hang your hat on that story. Just all the stuff. She never had anything else. Just that wacky story. And whenever he asked her about it, she tells it the same way every time. You know, no matter what happens from this moment forward, no matter what kind of sightings or encounters you and I have, if we start talking about this stuff when we're old, nobody's going to believe it. Exactly right. That's why so, I've always talked about, even if I did have a paranormal experience, I might not even mention it because everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, it's awfully convenient. The person yeah. with the show also is having a lot of paranormal sightings. Exactly. I also think it's odd when somebody has multiple, not with the same thing, but all the things. Like they've had a UFO encounter. They've seen Bigfoot. They saw a pale crawler. They saw oh, yeah, a lizard discussed. man. I'm yeah. like, you know the chances of anybody having a, a sighting like that? You've had all of them? But also, too, like we've talked about, there are empaths. There that are. Maybe there are people that can see more of it. We all know people. I, if y'all want to watch that video I was in, those two guys that I hunted with can spot deer. It's crazy, right? Like, there's <laughs> how good they are at spotting them and finding them in the middle of nowhere, like out in the middle of tall grass. All you can see is the tines sticking up. So people have their own thing. So I just wondered if, again, is it possible? <laughs> right? Yeah, I like the Sucralos voice. Yeah, Go say yeah, it yeah. Is it possible? It could be. I mean, it. I like to think it is. I like to think what the the uh, Constantine Keanu Reeves. Remember how he sees all those things whenever it's going on and nobody else sees them? And right. I like the idea of that. So I like to believe that there are people out there that see it. Because in my belief, if there are people out there that are as ignorant as this kind of stuff like I am, like I don't have any of those encounters, nothing cool like that, really. You know, no, the, if there's people out there like that, there has to be the exact opposite. That's the way I the agree. universe balances. So maybe there are people out there that see a lot of this stuff. But, homie, you need to listen to your grandmother. She saw something creepy. I agree. And if 100%. any of y'all out there have grandparents that are uh, got some wacky, crazy stories, man, take those down now yes. because they won't be around forever. When those stories are gone, they're gone. I had always intended on video and uh, doing a big interview with my dad's mother and uh, to talk to her about all of the stuff about being born, you know, in the in the in the 20s and, and growing up and all the stuff that she went through. And my grandmother on my father's side used to put windshields into B-52s in the Metroplex uh, when my grandfather was in the South Pacific. And in her downtime, she played roller derby. So my grandmother, you met her, my grandmother, uh-huh. Hazel, she was so she was like the Rosie, the Riveter, and she played roller derby. And she did that for like three or four years while she lived with family in the Metroplex. She had some of the craziest stories. Now, when you find out your mother played legit like roller derby in the 40s, it's crazy. <laughs> right? The idea of it is like madness of this whole thing. Well, for so, that yeah. time. I yes. Mean, you know, women yeah. were supposed to be, you're supposed to stay indoors. My grandmother wore cooking, pants. Cleaning. There yeah. are pictures of her wearing pants and a button up shirt. Her hair, you're like, for that, like what? Yeah. What? So, yeah. And I missed it. Right? I him hawed around and and this this is talks about how much I missed it. I missed it so much that she passed away. She was ninety two when she passed away. But I've talked to her about tons of stuff. I just never knew how to breach. It was weird for me being so young at the time, wanting to set up the video camera because you don't know how to tell your grandmother, "Hey, look, I know you're going to die soon. Can I get this?" It's a weird thing to say, right? Whereas, just breach it. 
I, I wish I, I would have done it. I agree. Just breach it. Because the reason I say that is my uncle Nick, yes, who was a P fifty one pilot, and and, and uh, had many sightings. Where I don't remember where he was at. Somewhere I think New Mexico, or yeah. some some airstrip where he was. I think it was in New Mexico. Him and a bunch of other guys, they saw. I think these, it was White Sands, wasn't it? I don't know, remember where, but he he told me more than once about these white orbs that they saw on the runway, mm-hmm. flying around, looking around. And it was one of those deals where I'm always like, you know what? I need to go over there some weekend to take my my task cam or my Zoom digital audio recorder and and interview him. Yeah, and then you know life kind of gets in the way, and then you don't do it. Two or three years would go by. I'd see him again. We'd talk. Yeah, come on over. I'll do it. Life gets away, and then you know, then he died. Yep, and I, I it's a regret I have because I would love to hear a really in depth story, his story, his account in his voice, in his voice, let him tell it because he told me not just that, but he knew lots of guys that I saw him when they were out flying around and stuff. Yeah, like I wonder, you know, David Fravor has come forward with this, but even according to him, it's quite common. I know a guy. Yeah. I'm friends with her father. And he's an airlines pilot, and he told me he's never seen anything, but he knows lots of guys who have. Yeah. And it's just a hush thing. So if you have somebody out there, and they don't have to be old, if you have somebody out there that has a really good story, man, do what you can to take take that down, whether it's pen and paper, whether it's a, a digital audio recording. With your phone, whatever it does, get it. Right. Just Get you know, that information. Not just for us. No, but, just for, just, yeah, for the sake of having it. But, and you'd be you're making all the listeners miss out. Think of what you could share, right? You could change yeah. the names and stuff. We don't, you don't have to worry about that, you know. And if you have a story and you already you know you already got it, you already got the hookup. Send it in. Expand yeah. perspectives at yahoo.com. You can call the show 888-393-2783, 888-393-BRUD. And don't forget about our sponsors, Felix Gray. Go to felixgrayglasses.com forward slash expanded and get your free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges on some amazing glasses. And also, Drink Trade. That's drinktrade.com forward slash expanded for $20 off your first three bags. Do it, folks. Trust me. You're going to like it. Cam, what do you got planned for the rest of your weekend? I'm going to be digging out of this cold, and then I have a construction dumpster that just got dropped off. You saw it got dropped off right in the middle of the storm. I saw that. Yeah, because I've got some stuff I'm redoing in the shop, and we're going through a bunch of stuff. Just kind of uh, just being a homeowner. You know how that... So that's what I've got planned. So when the weather gets good, I'll be back outside working. So that's about it. Sounds awesome. Well, I hope everybody out there has a good week. Stay safe, folks. Till next time, I'm Kyle. He's Cam. Peace, y'all.